Hey guys, today I thought we would talk about these little guys right here. The 64 LED matrixes. Now these are pretty cool. Let me uh, pop one off the board here and show it to you. Now these use, I know you can't read that, it's so damn dark, the Mac 7219 driver chip. And I'm trying to focus this again. Not so much. That looks pretty good. They're going to take five pins. You have VCC, ground, data in, CS, chip select, and clock. Now, here's the little caveat to these. To cascade them, they tell you to go in through this way and come out through here. But that's not entirely necessary, as you can see from the little rig that I have here. Um, you can daisy chain the chip select and the clock right from the inputs, no problem. The only thing that really passes through the chip from an input to an output is the data in. So you start, this is my first chip here on the left. I take the data out there. I'm running it underneath the board here to be neat and it comes to the data in here. Then the data out of this one comes to the data in of this one. The data out of this one, number three, comes to the data in of number four. Now, other than that, they each need five volts and ground, which I'm providing them here off the main bus on this board. See here we have the five volts. Let me, let me zoom in on the nano so we can talk about our connections here. Okay, so on the nano we have our five volt and our ground just going over to this bus right here. And then we're using digital pins eight, nine, and 10. Pin 8 is our data, pin 9 is our chip select, and pin 10 is the clock. So, the way this is all put together, let's start with the clock. The clock comes out of pin 10 on the Nano and goes into the first module. Then it daisy chains over here to this one, daisy chains to the third one, and daisy chains to the fourth one. Then we have chip select, which comes out of pin nine on the nano, goes into chip select of module one, daisy chain to module two, daisy chain to module three, then four. The only difference is the data, like I said, the data comes out of pin eight and goes into module one. Then the out, the data out from module one wraps around the bottom and comes into module two. I hope that wasn't too confusing. It's, I mean, it's relatively a simple setup. Let's go over and take a look at the programming now. All right, guys, let's take a look at the code that we're using here. And this is from the Max Matrix Library, written by Marcelo Moraes. And there's one thing that we have to be very careful of here, depending on which IDE we're using, or it is going to frustrate you to no end. Right here, we are defining all the possible characters that we can print out to our matrix. And it is going to store these characters in the EEPROM. And when it does that with this progmem command, program memory. Now, when you download the library, it is going to read like this. Progmem, 
prog underscore ucare. Okay, that is not going to work with the later versions of the Arduino IDE. So if you have 1.5 or later, you need to change that to progmem constant unsigned character. And that is right here. Progmem constant unsigned character. And then where we have this array defined, this character array, you can leave that and that's just fine all right make sure you pay attention to that or it's not going to compile and it's going to give you an error so after that we come down here and it tells you how to set up your array data goes to pin 8 your load goes to pin 9 and the clock goes to pin 10 and now on this line here max in use we tell it how many of those modules we have. For instance, I have four, so I'm putting in four. But you can go up to about eight or so, I think. Then we do this library constructor call here. Matrix M, data, load, clock, max in use. And that just uses these variable values right here. Now here are the strings that I'm going to print out. The first one is going to say hello then learn electronics youtube max 7219 and then just a blank so in our setup we say module init then we set our brightness uh, 15 is the brightest 0 is the darkest so I'm going about halfway and we have our serial begin because we can un uh, comment these lines here and it'll let you enter messages via the uh, serial terminal and that's something we're not going to do in this example but we're going to come back to this in a later video and I'm going to show you how we can accept input through the serial port and receive messages from the internet alright so then we're just printing our strings print string with shift we go through all that and then it is this function here void print character with shift whoops it's this one I'm sorry that was different that was for the serial port print string with shift so it prints the character then the shift it uses the shift speed variable and it says print character with shift shift speed and that takes care of everything through the library guys it doesn't get any easier than that right So if you want to have static messages, you can just fill in these strings and you can have as many as you want. If you want to receive them from the serial port, you can put it in there. And if you want to receive data from a sensor or something like that, that can be done too. All right. Pretty simple. Just don't forget in this line right here to change this progmem prog underscore uchar to progmem constant unsigned character otherwise noise bueno alright let's go take a look at this in action alright guys there she is the max 7219 64 LED module we have four of them that are cascaded and we're running that nice little demo sketch that lets us scroll across the screen whatever we want. Now, like I said, I've found these things to be particularly temperamental. And like As you can see here in this first module, I've got one line that's not working. It's a lot of fun once you get it working. Otherwise, it's a lot of frustration. But you can use this for, you know, clocks, um, yeah, whatever kind of message you want to make. I think it's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you really should, because we're giving away an Arduino Zero on St. Patrick's Day 2010 to all our subscribers. Well, 
to one lucky subscriber. To one. Let me clear that up. So if you're a subscriber, you're entered. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe and enter. And thank you for watching and supporting. And I'll catch you later.